Jack Whip. Let me join uh, the comments of uh, the Democratic, uh, independent Democratic senator from Maine uh, in the kind words for his colleague, uh, because what she said in a brief period of time was so important at this moment in the debate. I note with pride that of the top nations on a proportional basis supporting the effort in Ukraine, the Baltics rank at the top. And it, these small nations determined to be free know what it means to invest in the cause of the Ukrainians. I also note, and I believe she made reference to the fact, that a country like Poland, which ranks fifth on the list of proportional assistance to Ukraine is giving so much that is not accounted for in the ledger books. Uh, the people of Ukraine, when they left in a panic over the invasion of the Russians, went to Poland and were accepted in that country as neighbors who were going to have a helping hand when the, when the Polish people opened their homes. A leader in the Polish government said to me, Senator, you'll look all over Poland, you won't find a refugee camp of Ukrainian refugees. They're living in our homes. Uh, so that type of assistance is not calculated easily uh, in the accounting books, but it is meaningful. And I might add that among the top five nations I noted on our chart was Finland. Finland, which because of its uh, leadership, decided to join NATO. And in their arrival, it's my understanding, their accession to NATO doubled the border that Russia has to face of NATO countries uh, in size. Finland is a very large country. Uh, we're glad to have them as part of NATO in its future. And that is a, at stake as well. I don't want to get political on this issue about the future of NATO, but I think it's pretty clear that there are those of us who believe that the 31 nations of NATO are indispensable for maintaining security in Europe for years to come, decades to come, and we have to invest in it. If the United States should step away from this NATO commitment to Ukraine by its action on Capitol Hill, shame on us. There is so much at stake here in terms of the future of democracy. Last night, I'll close with this. As I was leaving Capitol Hill, in the darkness, we passed by four or five people standing on the sidewalk outside. There are Ukrainians and Ukrainian Americans who were there to beg us to stand by their country in this hour of need. Uh, they've been keeping a watch for weeks and months at a time uh, so that the United States commitment to Ukraine is appreciated by them and they express it to us as members of Congress. I saw them standing in the dark and realized that there may be many Americans going about their business, but these Ukrainian Americans know that this decision by the United States Congress and the Senate and the House could literally decide the future and the fate of their uh, homeland in, in Ukraine. I think it is an essential responsibility on a bipartisan basis, and I thank Senator McConnell for his inspiring words this morning. On a bipartisan basis, we need to stand with the Ukrainian people in this hour of need. I yield the floor.